Well, I said, Sister, I don't know. I can't say it's a vision now because it's not, but just something that I can't move. It's just pressing me to that baby. I could just look like uh, just that baby before me. So I went on and I said, I won't go now because I know it'll take some time to give it the transfusion and they give it through the head here, I think. So they, I know it's very painful and bad. So I just waited, went in and prayed for the baby and I made ready. I thought, this is the place where the Lord is leading me. And I rushed out to the hospital and, and I asked to see the baby and they sent me where the baby was. And in the room, I met the mother, which is sitting present now. And she told me her mother had got a hold of her about an hour before that or something like that. And had told her what, that the Lord was pressing on me to go to that baby. And when she returned to the bed, the baby was laying there cooking, good and laughing. So I went in and the little chap was just a kicking and a laughing, nursing this little bottle and everything, just as normal as any child you've ever seen in your life. And I just laid my hands over on the little fella. Now see, and blessed it, walked out of the building, and I just heard the mother say a few moments ago, he was done talking home. So that, that was yesterday when it happened. And today the baby is home well. So we're, that was, that is better than me making a hundred calls within myself. Amen. To be quiet yes, before the Lord so he can tell you just Amen. where to go and every time it's perfect. Amen. It's, it's the Lord leading. Now somebody said, well, you go over here, Brother Bram, you go down here, you, you get in such a turmoil, Is this Amen. one, that one, that one, you, God can't speak to you. If you just sit down and say, thank you, and lay it before the Lord, say, now, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? Now, you know I'm your servant. Or, Amen. You, but see, the Lord knowing that I would go there, as soon as he spoke to my heart, he healed the baby before I even got there. Amen. <laughs> See? Oh, I like that. Yes, sir. See, it wasn't me going there. Now, you say, what was that, Brother Branham? See, we have gifts in the body of Christ. Amen. And the Holy Spirit itself, knowing what that was, the intercession there, the Holy Spirit was pressing up on me to that baby. And as soon as I prayed for the baby, even at home, and went to the baby, because that was to fulfill what he said, Amen. the Holy Spirit making intercessions there on things that we can't understand. Amen. Again, see? Isn't he wonderful? Oh, I tell you, uh, friends, tonight I got so much to be thankful for. Uh, I, I just don't know how to start. Uh, and I wouldn't even try. I've got, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to read a few words here in the scripture and talk on them a few minutes, Lord willing. But first, I want to express my gratitude to Jesus Christ, Amen. the Son of God, that has saved me and has washed me in his own blood and Give me this grand and glorious hope Amen. that someday I'll see him face to face and I will not stand there in condemnation because his blood has already redeemed me. And I am redeemed tonight by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, what he has given me to be fellow citizen of the same kingdom that you all are going to and we together are joint heirs with him in glory. Amen. What a marvelous thing it is. And I was sitting last evening talking to some people, he's present at the time, and today way down and below Elizabeth at a brother's table where we were sitting having dinner today. And we were speaking about uh, the fundamental uh, fact or fundamental uh, gospel that we have and what a reality beyond any shadow of doubt, we have no room at all for any doubt. This tabernacle and the people, its members and the people of Jeffersonville and around about will stand at the judgment. If we're not saved, we will stand absolutely uh, without an excuse. Amen. Some time ago, as a young minister, when my first revival comes, I was headed over here on the corner with this housing project in a tent. I was baptizing a group down the river that Sunday afternoon when the angel of the Lord made his first appearance in public in a vindication of the message that I was to speak. And it was a light came down from heaven and stood there. People were perhaps in a tabernacle night who stood and seen that light. And I uh, started forth telling it and so forth and all, you know how the story goes, and on and on. And people sometimes would walk away and say, that's just imagination. You leave a meeting where people would see it and walk away and say, I saw it. Or they'd say, well, I didn't see it. Now, of course, God lets see who he wants to see. 
when the wise men followed the stars, there's not one speck of history or any observatory or anything that even kept time by the stars. But no one seen that star but the wise men. Amen. That's right. Because they were looking for it. And they were expecting to see it. And it guided them to the Christ. And yet it passed over every observatory and the, as the people looked at the skies to tell the time and so forth. But nobody seen it going but the wise men. For it's intended for them to see it. If God intends for you to see something, you'll see it. Amen. Elijah standing at Dawson that time, and he looked around, and the servant looked out and said, Oh, look at the Syrians. We're in camp. Buddy. Elijah says, Well, there's more with us than there is with them. He looked around, and he couldn't see nothing. But uh, Elijah standing there, and he said, he, God said, Open this young man's eyes, Lord. And when, with the same eyes, only visualize that when he opened his eyes around that prophet stood chariots of fire and Amen. horses Amen. of fire and the, he it was if some were and we know that his presence is with his believing children i was speaking i said in the room sat my wife and we was talking about that same life where it come and had his picture taken and just referring back tonight to that phenomenal i believe at least one or two people three people i guess there was in the building now, which is David back there, Brother Wood and Sister Wood, was at Houston, Texas, when the picture, when God permitted to be taken. Now, if you stood tonight and looked at that angel, certainly, there's many of you here, perhaps, have never seen it, but see that light, a pillar of fire, that led the children of Israel, that come into the prison cells with Peter, and, and, uh, and delivered him from the prison, the same angel of the Lord. And here it is. After all those hundreds, yes, thousands of years, it's still here with us now. Amen. And it's had his picture taken standing, where it was standing. Not only not for me, but for the church, for the body Amen. of believers, to, to everyone. Now notice, if I, I believe it, it was actually a pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. Don't you believe yeah. it? It's a pillar of fire. Yeah. And I actually believe that that light come into the prison and 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 where Peter was at. Don't you believe that testimony? I believe it with all my heart. It's more than I believe, my name is William Branham. I, I believe that. I believe that story. But yet, we have a more stricter, fundamental proof of it than that. We do. We have a more stricter, fundamental proof. Now, I believe that by faith. And what if the angel of the Lord was standing here now circling and every one of your eyes would be visualized to see it? That would be pretty good. But to look at the picture of it is far more proof than what it's looking at with your eyes. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Because you could have an optical illusion, but that, that camera won't take an optical illusion. <laughs> it won't do it because it's, it's a camera and it'll take that actual picture. It has to be there to strike the lens. See, you can have optical illusions and things that look like it is when it's not. See? But when it, the picture that I, and it could be psychology. You can say, you see that there, and you just keep saying, yes, I believe it, and believe it so much to actually you think you see it when you don't. Yeah. See? That's right. But that's psychology. But you, um, it just got you so mentally pressed towards it to you, you just imagine it, so imagine it so much to it becomes a reality. You just imagine somebody hates you once, and they don't hate you, but you imagine they do. And you just keep thinking, they don't like me, and the first thing you'll be shunning that person when they haven't done nothing to you. And after all, it becomes so a reality to you that so you'll actually believe that that person doesn't like it, and you might ball them out or say something to you. For instance, your wife or your husband or some neighbor or something like that, when the person is absolutely innocent of any ill thing, it's because that you just imagine it so for it to become a reality to you. Amen. Now, see what I mean? Yes. But actually, when a photograph is taken, it's got to be there. So it's, tonight, we have went through, his Brother Grimm expressed a while ago, the many ups and downs of the church and so forth. We've been through many dangerous horrors and snares. It's been a class different, uh, said we were indifferent and holy rollers and all kinds of names and so forth like that. But yet, in the midst of all of it, if this tabernacle would be burnt down tonight and I should die and the rest of you should go to tonight, our testimony is absolutely the truth. There's uh, millions of people that have known of it 
and uh, scientific proof proves not only our word what we have said before the light, before the angel ever had his picture taken, it was testified since a child that that light come along, years, many of you sitting here and heard me speak of it, years and years and knowed all about it, years and years before the picture was ever taken, and when the scientific world got the picture of it, it was exactly the same thing that we testified about. Yeah. So yeah. that shows you're telling the truth. It's absolutely the truth. So tonight, I am so thankful to know that the great Jehovah God that once roared off of Mount Sinai, Amen. that once stood on the mount and taught the Beatitudes, and raised from the dead, Amen. is in our midst tonight. Amen. And is the same as he was then, he is today, and will be forever. Yes. And to think that he, the God of heaven, would humiliate himself to come down and associate with such as myself. And usher poor people, not much of this world's good, and just illiterate, and uh, I am. And yet he loved me so that he came down and saved me by his grace. Amen. Nothing I deserved or could not do, Amen. but he saved me because before the foundation of the world was, he predestinated me to be saved in his own foreknowledge before the world began. And every Amen. other man that saved, he did the same thing for them. Amen. Oh, what a marvelous thing. What a wonderful opportunity it is. And my whole heart's desire is for this year, if God will hear my prayer, I may not be able to stay now until the full midnight. I've got two little girls back there who get sleeping, goes whining and crying. I may have to run them out first. And I want to say this, if I don't get a chance to get back up and testify, that I... I have want to thank each one of you for your prayer that you have prayed this year for me. If you ever let me down, I'm gone. Amen. It's just as you hold me up in prayer, that's how I go on to the day. And I, I love you, as a brother said a while ago, with all my heart. I don't get to get here like I should. I don't get to see the people and minister at home like I, I want to, like my heart is. But I'm just a human, and I, I'm very much Amen. limited to certain hours and certain strengths and so forth. And now, but by God's help, if He'll help me, I want this year to be the greatest year I've ever had in my life. Amen. Amen. I have now, by God's grace, won over a half million souls to Christ, and I hope that this year to make it the full million. If Amen. God willing, well, if God willing, I want to start down to the. The foreign countries again, just as soon as we're financially and so forth able to do it, and get into the other countries over there where we win so many thousands Amen. at one time. And I know that the day is now. The hours are way spent. Twilight is falling, friends. And I want to do all that I can, for this is the only time that you and I will ever be mortal. This Amen. is the only time we'll ever have the privilege of all eternity to win someone to Christ. Let's do it. Everything that we can do, let's put every hour that we possibly can to his glory. That's my intention for this coming year. And by God's help, your prayer, I'll make it. So let's pray for him now. And now, let's bow our head just a moment for the opening of the word. Father, this is thy eternal word laying here before me. No man in heaven or earth was worthy to take the book loose, the seals or look thereon, but the lamb that was slain the foundation of the world. Now we call him, and if we have found grace in thy sight, we pray, O Lamb of God, that you will take these few moments now as we turn back the pages of thy word and open it to our hearts, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I was going to study just a little while this afternoon on a few things to talk on for tonight, but I didn't get in in time to do so. So my wife come on down with Billy. And I, um, I had to just reach in and just, just thumb through the Bible. And I thought, well, I'll go over that Mel Chesnick. And I thought, oh, my. If I got on that, the other brothers wouldn't have a time to speak. Amen. And so on that, I'm holding that off for in a few days, the Lord will. Really. So when we have a lot of time. Now, then I found the 10th chapter of the Acts, the speaking of the early church. If anyone desires and have a Bible, they would turn to Acts, the 10th chapter, for just a little exhortation for a few moments. And while you're turning, I'll give a little preview of the back. Last 
Sunday a week ago, I believe now, or last Sunday it was, a week ago, that we studied in the book of Acts concerning the early church. We were in Acts 2, I believe, where when they being let go and went to their jihad, Peter told them about how they had to repent and to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I'd like to make a little expression. Is anything all right tonight from the platform? Look, see, everyone has always said, Brother Bill, nobody understands you. Well, uh, I am maybe just a little bit queer, but, uh, you know, but I, I don't mean to be. But I have ideas of things and my convictions. Now, I have been thoroughly, I'm thoroughly convinced that many things that, that's in the scripture, that's apostolic, that we don't carry out this day. And, for instance, one thing many people have said, how, when you're out in those evangelistic meetings, how do you get 30,000 people to the altar to get saved? They don't have to come to the altar to get saved. The only thing they have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? I just want to ask you something, and you think of it, then I'll get your letters this next week. Can I can't be a Catholic, but the Catholic believes this word is inspired, but the church is over the word. I can't be a Protestant, for the Protestants just take as much as they think it's all right, and the rest of it ain't inspired. So I believe what the Bible says to be the truth. Amen. I believe that that's God's word. In order to believe that, I've got to surrender my whole life and my whole will to that, to believe that that is the truth. If there's nothing else truth but that, there's no more to be added to it or none taken away from it. That's just the way it's supposed to be. And anybody that will take out of that book or add to it, the same will be taken out of the book of life, said God in Revelation. Whosoever taketh away or addeth to is this. That is God's complete will and revelation of Jesus Christ to the people. That's right. Now, in order to do that, I must believe that God's word is absolutely the truth. And in Acts 2.38, when Peter said, repent every one of you, they said, man and brother, what can we do first? They want to be saved. Now watch, he's talking there to unbelievers. Now watch what he said. He said, repent every one of you. Now what does repent mean? Repent means to be sorry for what you've done. For instance, what if I turn right around here down and hit my brother without a call? And I want to repent for it. I'd say, Brother Neville, I'm sorry I did that. Well, then, if I am say I'm sorry I did it and mean it from my heart, I am repentant. And if I'm sorry for my sins and ask God to forgive me, I am repentant. Is that right? All right. Peter said, repent or be sorry for your sins. And then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is that true? Amen. All right. If the house, when Paul and Silas had had the meeting and had been put in jail, beaten because they cast the evil spirit out of a fortune teller, and when they were in the Philippian jail, and that night when they sang songs and they the Lord sent an earthquake and shake the jail so hard till it, the shackles fell off their hands. The jailer pulled his sword to kill himself. And Paul said, see that you do yourself no harm. For we're all here. And he said, what could he do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. Amen. All your heart and you shall be saved, you and your household. Amen. Notice, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if a man is sorry for his sin, I just won't take it easy, so it'll soak real deep. If a man is sorry for his sins and repents being sorry for his sins and accepts Jesus Christ as his Savior from his sins and is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, God's under obligation at that very minute to give the man the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If he isn't, he, can't, he didn't keep his word. Amen. Is that right? 
Amen. Now, why all the tearing meeting things? That's right. Why all the evidences and things we got to have? Amen. Now, Jesus said, St. John 5, 24, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Amen. Now, if the everlasting life, what does the word everlasting mean? That means without end. Yes. If, he, if he, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has life without end. Amen. While they're coming back and, and trying to get saved over and all these things then. Amen. If you got life without end, you can't perish. Your life can't. Because you've got everlasting life. Right. Now, if some of you might want to look the word up, you'll find in there the Greek word has zoe, Z-O-E, the Greek word, which means the life of God. Because if it's everlasting, there's only one thing that is everlasting, and that is God. Right. He is from everlasting unto everlasting, thou art God. Amen. Now, if he's from everlasting unto everlasting and has given you everlasting unto everlasting life, then you'll have to become a part of his everlasting being. Is that right? And if you become a part of his everlasting being, that makes you a son or a daughter to him, which is exactly fulfill what the scripture says. We're sons and daughters of God. Is that right? When did you get it? When you shout it, when you went to the altar, when you spoke in tongues, when you believe. Amen. Amen. We baptize so many that don't believe. Amen. We hear so many speak in tongues that don't believe. Amen. We have worked them up to evidences and made things and laid them out and say, when you do this, you got it. There's nothing in the Bible, no word of the Bible that you can pin a man down because he does this, that he's a Christian. He's a Christian because he believes and his own life bears the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. No matter what he does. See? Amen. That's it. Now, and when you believe, you receive everlasting life. And everlasting life is God. And God is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is that right? Amen. If God and the Holy Spirit is the same person, Jesus had two fathers. Jesus said that God was his father, and the Bible says that the Holy Ghost was his father. So they both was the same person. And if you receive God, everlasting life in you, then what have you received? Amen. That's what I want to know. Amen. You get the idea? We're so full of theory. The church has been because it's been denominationalized. This denomination finds this, they believe in this, they make a denomination out of it, they can't move no farther than that. But God's church is constantly moving. Amen. Moving Amen. on, it just moves right off and leaves the denomination sitting in the back. It Amen. moves away from Luther, it moves away from Methodist, it moves away from Baptist, it moves away from Presbyterian, and it's moving away from Pentecost. Yes. Sure. Because everlasting life is moving on. See? Amen. And you get it because why? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, there's just two things. Look, you're either an unbeliever or a believer. It's either daytime or it's nighttime. Is that right? Yes. Now, I can't say just this much of this is, is, is nighttime. Just what I see through that window, that's what's nighttime. No, no. The whole thing's nighttime. Amen. That's right. Now, Smoke, as I've often said, smoking cigarettes, chewing tobacco, and drinking whiskey, that isn't sin. That's the attributes of sin. Amen. You do that because you're an unbeliever. Amen. And living righteous and holy and peaceful and calm and quiet and lovely and, and sociable and so forth, that isn't because you're a Christian. That's just the attributes of Christianity. Amen. It's Amen. because of what's in you makes that. And if you're impersonating it or doing it because you're supposed to be a Christian, you're a hypocrite. Amen. Right. right. If your life isn't lived sweetly because in you something comes out, it makes it. Makes you feel that way. 
You will go through trials and troubles and ups and downs and misunderstood. That doesn't have one thing to do with it. When Israel backslid and went out into Egypt, they was backslid. They never lost their covenant. They lost their joy and their salvation. Amen. David didn't say, restore to me my salvation. He said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Amen. His salvation had to remain the same. But he went off the wrong end and lost the joy of his salvation. Do you know what I mean? When did you get saved? When did you get sanctified? When did you get filled with the Holy Ghost? When you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Or you received that everlasting life, but then from then on you started growing. Amen. You started growing. You grew through sanctification, through the Holy Ghost, and through speaking with tongues, and through all these things here. But you received life when you believed. Amen. Do you know what I mean? And now that doesn't mean you know, some people have already got life and you're trying to get them to do something here when they haven't even reached that place yet. And Pentecostal people has never has come to the place where the church is getting now to the adoption or the placing of sons. Now in the Old Testament, when a son was born into a home, it was a son because it was born in a home. My son is my son when he's born to me. And when the Pentecostal church gave birth or found what they called the birth, the new birth of the Holy Ghost church, that they were born into the kingdom of God. Well, now, in the Old Testament, now in Ephesians, the first chapter, it said we are predestinated unto the adoption of sons. Unto the adoption of sons? Look at that. The adoption of sons. Yes, sir. In a man in the Old Testament, when he had a son born into his house, he was a son when he was born. But there was a tutor who raised that child until he come to a certain age. Then if this tutor was brought word to the father that the child was worthy and if all right and everything. Now, uh, he, was, he was then adopted into that family. Many of you Old Testament readers know the scripture on that. He was adopted into the family. But if he wasn't, he still remained a son, but he wasn't adopted. And then if he was adopted, he was brought out in the street, put on a robe, and then a ceremony was made. And then this boy's signature on the check meant just the same as his daddy. Just the same, for he was adopted into his full fellowship Amen. of the family. Amen. God adopted his own son. Yes. When he took him up, took Peter, James, and John as a witness. And now the two or three witnesses that ever were to be established. And went up there, and God overshadowed Christ, the Holy Spirit, overshadowed Christ, and his raiment shined like the sun. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And God himself said, This is my beloved son, hear ye him. In other words, there it is, what he says is all of it. And then he was given equal, and of course it was God, but God in the flesh of Jesus Christ manifests himself to the people, and there God adopted his own son. And now when the Pentecostal church and these people in the last day church begin to find the new birth being born again, they thought that settled it. No, sir. Your ups and downs and ins and outs and things like that, God can't place you as a son. But when you stay in the kingdom, stay in the gospel, stay right, one of these days God will call you out and set you aside, adopt you as his son before the people, and give you something that will shake the nations with it. Amen. You know what I mean? It's the adoption into the family. Amen. Now, these who had followed him, Peter, James, and John, we're speaking tonight of Peter, a great vision, how those men lived in that day. Now, first, up here at the 20, the 32nd verse of the previous chapter, the, the ninth chapter, and it came to pass as Peter passed through all the quarters, came down uh, to the saints which were at Lestra. And there he found a certain man named Enos which was kept, which had kept his, his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Enos, Jesus Christ make of thee whole, rise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Amen. Watch it. Now, look what happened. And all that dwelt at Israel and Shine, watch here, all turn to the Lord. 
because the man that had palsy was healed, the whole country turned to the Lord. For a man being healed with a palsy. And today, the dead raised up. And the people said, it's demonology, it's psychology, it's mental telepathy. The person wasn't dead to begin with. You see the difference? It's our indifference towards God that's determined what we're getting today. Amen. We are going to receive divine judgment. The whole world's shaking right now over the impact of the on creeping judgment. One of the ministers will probably pick it up in a few minutes on the oncoming judgment. And I hope they do anyhow. On the oncoming judgment. Because the whole world is ready to it's quivering. Every nation's quivering. Don't you think that Russia isn't quivering too? Yeah. The United States and the islands are quivering. Who's going to throw that first atomic bomb? When it does, it may throw the whole thing out of cater and not be a who, cobalt bomb. What yield them does that lose? There won't be even a flower and insect on the face of the earth left. Right now in the hands of wicked, sinful, hell-bound man. And your destination of this earth's journey I said, Earth's journey is left to the hands of wicked and sinful man. You better watch where your soul's destination is fled far. If it isn't fled towards heaven and towards God, turn tonight with all your heart. And don't let the old year pass away without you turning to God. For your earthly destination is determined by the hands of wicked and cruel cold-hearted, atheotic man. That's where your body is determined. Whatever they want to do about it now, that finishes you up. God be merciful. And God in his loving mercy sent in signs and wonders and miracles and everything and preaching the gospel and people constantly turning your face for, yeah. away from it. Then how can you expect anything else but judgment? You must receive it. And one man being healed of palsy in a whole country turned to Christ. And here where we have kings and potentates, monarchs and uh, congressmen and everything else, of afflictions and diseases and dead and passed away and see them rise to life again and the nation only scorn and laugh at it. And what we got left for judgment. Oh, brother, if there ever was a time that God wake up his people, it's the day. This coming year, may God anoint his ministers like flames of fire. For you're in the last days and the closing times. Look here, this same man. Come down, there's a girl named Tabitha, which means darkest, died when she was down there. And Peter was up at Joppa. They sent up and got him and brought him down. And he walked into where she was laying a cart, put all the people out and knelt down and prayed. And when he did, he went, over, he went over and took a hold of her hand and raised her up, and she was whole again, alive. Amen. Watch what took place. And it came to pass that he tarried many days just before that, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. Many believed. And today they say, I doubt whether she's dead at all or not. She's just in a coma. Or something like that. Or don't believe in such a thing. Explain it all away. When you explain away the supernatural out of the Bible, you're explaining away the very God that you worship. Amen. Certainly you are. He's a supernatural God. All right. Now, but stop these apostles. Brother, they have been with Jesus. Amen. They didn't care what anybody said. They called him over there one time and told him the days of miracles was past and whipped him and put him in jail and kept him all night and next morning put him in judgment. And they come to find out they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd taken notice to him that they had been with Jesus. Being let go, they never went over and consulted in the seminary anymore. They went to their own people. And when they come together explaining what the Lord had done, they gathered together and prayed this prayer. Lord, why did is fulfilled with the spoke of the prophet, of course. Amen. Why did the heathens rage Amen. and the people imagine a vain thing? Amen. 
said truly, give us power the stretching forth the hand of thy holy child Jesus to heal the sick and times and wonders might be dead. And when that people prayed with one accord in that place, the building were shook where they were assembled together. What we need tonight is a unitarian prayer meeting where we find ourselves Amen. together with such one heart and one accord and pray a prayer like that. Amen. Then we'll have another shaking time. Amen. Amen. Notice, Peter wants the denier of the Lord. Once didn't believe on him. Or to deny him. And went out and wept bitterly and come in. Now he's received the Holy Spirit. Listen at him preach. And there was a certain man by the name of called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man. One that feared God with all his house. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. What a man. Now, not, remember, not even a Gentile, not even a Jew, he was a Gentile. A centurion, over a century is a hundred man. But he was a God-fearing man. God is always among the Gentile people found God-fearing man. Amen. While walking today and talking with the young man, I said, when I get to heaven, one of the things I want to do was to walk up and shake hands with a certain fellow that had done a gallant thing. And he talked about the one he wanted to see. He wanted to shake his hand of different things. Of how that God blessed the people. When you're out, after that David had taken Bathsheba, his wife, and they set out and got him, and she was to be mother, and brought her in so that he could lay it on the earth. And he was not a Gentile. He was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. And he was a Hatite, a proselyte to the Jewish religion. And they told him to go down and stay a while at home with his lovely, beautiful wife. He said, God forbid that I do such a thing as that in the ark of my God on the battlefield. Amen. And he refused to do it. Brother, when I get to glory, I want to walk up to your eyes, shake his hands, and say, God be praised for your testimony. meant something to me in my earthly journey. Amen. I want to walk over to Daniel and say, you know, Daniel, when you went in there fearless before those lines, that testimony meant something to me. Amen. Yes, sir. I want to see the apostle Peter and say, uh, Peter, that night when you was in prison and the Lord came in the big light and shined over you, oh, I always admired that. And he started following that light the door open before he took you right out in the streets. You thought you were dreaming. Amen. What a time. Hey. Not going to be no quiet place in heaven when all that redeemed gets around there, is it? Hey. It's going to be a marvelous thing take place up there when all the redeemed comes marching in. And here's this centurion, the house of Cornelius. Look how God arranged it. Now, Cornelius was a God-fearing man. He prayed always to give alms to the people. You never do nothing worthwhile but what God puts it to your record. That's right. And he prayed and he gave alms to the people, and he was a great man. And one day while he was in prayer in the house, there came an angel into the room where he was at. you believe in an angel? The angel came into the room where he was at and said, Cornelius, raise up and go down to Joppa and ask for one named Peter who dwells in the house of one called Simon. And he'll tell you what to do. Amen. Now, Peter, at this time, had been traveling, so he got hungry. It's about 12 o'clock. So he goes up on the housetop and took a little nap. He was going to take a nap while he was up there, waiting for them to get dinner ready. And so Cornelius sat down to a soldier and two devout men and brought him down to find Peter. And while God, if he's sending someone to see you, he's making arrangements ahead of time for this thing to happen. He made arrangements at the hospital for this baby yesterday that was laying there in a dying condition that they didn't know what was the matter and the Holy Spirit spoke in the room, made arrangements at the hospital for the healing of the child Amen. before he even got there. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. In Finland, when that little boy was laying there on the road dead and his father and mother running from the field screaming and wringing their hands, 
God had rearranged his resurrection Amen. two years ahead of time. Amen. Praise the Lord. And tonight, while we're here in this church, and some of these things that we do, God has rearranged our resurrection. Amen. Some glorious day you come. It's all prearranged. And the men and women who think of it, sometimes poets sing these songs, Oh, there's going to be a meeting in the air. About 15 years ago, tonight, I was standing on this platform, there's a big sharp teaching. And there's a little Pentecostal group come from Louisville. And I never did believe in there's them people dancing the way they did. And there's a little lady come up here to play the piano, and there's going to play a special and beat on little cymbals on a washboard, and some of them beat on a tin can. I was very much of a critic of it. So I thought, what's going to happen? And the woman come up to play the special, she got to playing, the lady got to beating on the washboard, and this little blonde-headed girl jumped out of here on the floor and began to dance in the spirit. And me sitting in the seat of the storm pool. I said, I wish you would look at that. And I've been telling my church, so it's all wondering what I was going to do about it. I kept looking at her, and I thought, look at that. Now, if that isn't something, making a tavern out of my church. And I was sitting there, not knowing any better. I wasn't saying nothing, but in my heart, I was thinking. So I watched her there while she was dancing. And the first thing I said, now, wait a minute. wonder if the lady's got any scripture for her. And I began to think about the scriptures. I said, where was dancing ever ordained at? The first place in the Bible. That's right. Amen. Now I thought, what day of day? I've seen that the children of Israel, when they crossed the Red Sea, Miriam looked back and seen all those tap masters down it. She picked up a tambourine and began to dance and beat this tambourine and run down the shores dancing, and the daughters of Israel followed her dancing. Amen. I thought that's victory. Amen. I've seen David when his sweetheart sitting up there behind his fan of fanny looking at her cute little boyfriend. David, standing out there, and here come the ark that Brother Grimm talked about a while ago, coming across the hill, and David seen it coming. He danced around and around and around. Amen. Why, she said, you embarrass me. He said, if you don't like that, watch this. Amen. And around and around and around he went again. Amen. You know what? God looked down out of heaven and said, David, you're a man after my own heart. Amen. That's right. Amen. And I thought, you know, one thing you be, I haven't got enough victory, maybe. I got sitting there, and I got my Methodist foot patent. And the first thing you know, God, my judge, I, before I know what I was doing, I was out on the floor here dancing around with that girl. Run! Then I said, God, take me out of the seat of the storm. Let me look at anything sensibly before I ever pass a judgment anymore. Amen. God does things peculiar. I don't believe in a lot of nonsense. I don't believe in a lot of counterdot. But I believe in a real genuine Spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, Word of God being preached in power and demonstration. Yeah. Amen. For that's the thing that saved me. That's the thing that's brought me thus far. That's the thing that helped me when the doctor said I was dying. That's the thing that saved me in the hour of my death. That's the thing that will resurrect me, and that's the thing I'll go to heaven with. Yeah. If I ever get there, I'll have to go by, because I don't know nothing else about that, and don't want to know nothing else about yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So Jesus and him crucified, and that's all. If he's crucified, then it crucifies my flesh with him, and I'm dead to the things of the world. Fine. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm getting religious. <laughs> I begin to feel that way. Notice, here they was, by a lot of time. Wonderful meeting they were having. Cornelius said, now you go down there and ask the one named Peter. And said, never heard of him before. And Peter up there thought, Lord, I'll take a little nap just before I eat dinner. I'm so hungry and tired. And when he laid there, he fell in a trance. Amen. Scripture says so. Then I believe he fell in a trance, don't you? Amen. And when he did, he seen a sheep coming down, all full of creeping things. And the boy said, Rise, Peter, slay me. He said, Lord, I'm a Jew. Nothing unclean or common has ever went in my mouth. He said, Don't you call that common what I make clean. Amen. Said, You rise. Said, is somebody waiting for you out the gate? And go ahead, don't doubt nothing. Follow him. Exactly. Amen. Now, Peter, he is sanctimonious for ways, you know. He got to have some prestige around the people, so he had to watch what he eat. He was a Jew. He'd been raised up a, a strict Presbyterian, you know, or something. And he had to watch what he was doing because of his church affairs. So the Lord said, you follow them Gentiles, not 
paying any attention to what's done or whatever you go on up there. And when he went up to the house of Cornelius, straightway, Cornelius gathered all his people around him. And he told him how he saw the angel. He said, now, Peter, I, I sent for you. And when Peter got up there and began to preach, while Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on him. Amen. And it was all filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, prophesying, speaking in tongues, and having a marvelous time. He said, can we forbid water? Now these have received the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Peter carried with them certain days. That's the apostolic church moving in the Spirit. Wherever God said, Peter done without his dinner. Peter went on to follow the Lord. And God could ever get a man and woman today in this tabernacle or anywhere else that will pay no attention to what's going on around them, but submit themselves to the Lord as an individual unit. God will lead the same man today that he lived then. He proves that he's with us. Amen. Amen. What we need today is a humble, submitted life. Submit yourself. Don't squeeze yourself back. Don't do nothing. Lead straight with the Holy Spirit. Amen. What the Spirit says, do, do quickly. Don't say, well, I'll wait and find out what this is and that is. What the Holy Spirit says, do, go do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. What if I had to went to Finland when the Holy Spirit called me over there? What if I had to went to the hospital yesterday where the little baby was laying there dying? They had to win. It's obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Do what the Holy Spirit says do. Yeah. What we need tonight is to let loose of all of our little squeezy ideas and let the Holy Spirit, you're taught, you're, you know what's right and wrong. Amen. But what you need tonight is a great big bundle full of the love of God poured out in your heart. All differences washed away. Bear it with the old years. Amen. Pass it out. Let it go. Let's start a new life, a new beginning. You can't, if you're already born to the kingdom of God, you've already got the Holy Spirit in you. The only thing you have to do is cut loose from these things in the world that's holding you down. Amen. Then let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easy to set us, that we might run with patience the rough life and the race is set before us. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Lay aside the weight. Could you imagine the wise man coming to see Jesus? I just take a little drama for a minute. I can see they say three wise men. We just say there was three. Jim, John, and George would say their names was. And they're coming to see Jesus. And I can see them all get ready to go. We'll take this fellow Jim. He's quite a man. He runs and tells his wife, said, Wife, you know what? I've seen the star, so I've got to go. And so he goes over and he packs up to go. That's what the married people today are trying to pack up to be a Christian. Amen. If there's anything you need to unpack to be a Christian. Amen. Got too many things hanging on now. I'm saying, I'm mother, you know, I couldn't go along unless I took my card table so he hangs that on the camel. Because, you know, the other boys wouldn't appreciate me going along if I didn't have a card table on. All these other little old things that keep you. And you have a little box of selfishness. You have to hang that on, too. You have to hang on a little tattle, a little backbite, a little of this, that. Hang it on the camel. And the first thing you know, you get jumped up a straddle of the old camel and say, Come on, now, let's go. <laughs> the old camel can't hardly move. He smashed down so hard till he's bull-legged almost. And you're always kicking and complaining about your church you're going to, and maybe it's you got so loaded up till it can't run. That's what's the matter. You need to unload, wash up, clean up, get right. Uh, hey, man, what's the matter with me? Notice, that's what it is. I can see the others going, moving on. And the first thing you know, he got out and looked at that star again. And so the first thing he began to throw tables one way, packages the other way. The wife said, where are you going, John? Said, I'm laying aside every weight that's so easy to set me. And I've got to run this race with patience. Amen. For straight is the gate and narrow is the way, but few there will be that will find it. There's only room for you and Jesus. No one else can go through. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. He said, I can hear him say, well, look, you forget your compass. I don't need any compass. You forget your seminary degree. You forget your... Bacchanalized services and all these other things that you hang on. He said, listen, I don't need any compass. Amen. How are you going there? He pointed up to the star and said, I'm going God's provided way. Amen. God provided me a star to follow. That'll take me to the Christ. Hallelujah. 
And what tonight? We don't need any great long tunings and all this. We want to go God's provided way, and God's provided way of this day is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and led Amen. by the Holy Spirit or sons of God that will bring you to the Lay aside the way. Lay aside everything else. Let's get back to the apostolic days. Yeah. Our foundation is sure. God's proved it to us. But signs and wonders and pictures and everything else, he's proved that he's with us. Yeah. And around the world, yeah. Yeah. this glorious, mighty gospel swept a million five hundred thousand into the kingdom of God last year. Yeah. The Pentecostal church succeeded every church there was in the world last year in conversion. A million five hundred thousand recorded. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What's the matter? It's the most mighty thing there is on earth today, but the devil got among them and broke them off in this little group and that little group and this little group to make them fuss with one another. If they ever forget their selfishness and their difference, and join their hands together, their hearts together as one, the millennium would set in. Amen. Amen. What we need tonight, friends, get together. That's what Graham Tabernacle needs to do. That's what all the churches need to do, is get together as one fellowship, as one individual in Christ Jesus, the newborn babe, and walk this straight and narrow path, looking to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Look here, not taking up for our tabernacle and its doctrines and so forth. But I say this, my dear friends, you search the world anywhere you want to, and we say this boastly, not boast in nothing but Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But look what God Almighty has done for this little church. Amen. Turn around and look if you wish to. Right from this church here started this great revival that swept the whole world. Amen. Amen. That's right. Look it over and see if it is. God is with us. In his love and mercy, look how he heals us when we're sick. Look at the cancer cases and blind and deaf and dumb and everything else that he heals in our midst everywhere. They was loving enough to come down for our scientific proof to put his approval up on the church had his picture taken. Amen. Amen. One of the critics still have to shut their mouths and step back and say, think nothing about it. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad tonight. Amen. I'm one of them. Amen. I'm so glad to be a Christian. I'm so glad that I'm living here among people who believe in this great move. I expect there to be a little differences. We're human. But in principle, we're one. Amen. Right. We're one. Together we stand as one unit in Jesus Christ. God has blessed us to give us all these wonderful things. Just think how I, I could have been here myself tonight if it hadn't been for the Lord. When the best of doctors said I couldn't make it. But the chief doctor come down and said, it's all in my hands and you'll make it. I believe this. Our sister Weaver sitting there as a skeleton sitting in that wheelchair when they wheeled her up here to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Doctor, give her till morning to live. With a cancer eating her up. About seven or eight years ago. There she is tonight with us. Amen. How many more can I call that's walked in and out of these doors here? That's coming here crippled and afflicted and sick and lame and halt and blind. Everything else has been healed. Amen. Just in this one little door here. As a witness. Amen. Of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we to be? What are this brand of heaven going to be? It's to be a lighthouse. Yeah. Yeah. The setting in one of the darkest places of the world, Jeffersonville. Yeah. There was a place that needed the gospel in Jeffersonville. Yeah. Right. But can any good thing come out of Nazareth that come and see? That's right. The dark spot. We don't need the lights in the daytime. We need them in where it's dark. Yeah. That's where God sends lights in dark places. Mighty hard, easy to go where everything's running smooth, but where she's running hard. Where the dark places is the rough places. But I be carried home to heaven on a flower bed of ease, while there's fault to win the prize and sail through bloody seas. Right here where people are splitting hairs and differences and things like that. 140,000 heathens die every day and go to meet Jesus, or go to meet a just and honest God without knowing anything about him. 
140,000 die every day. The death toll of heathens that never heard the name of Jesus Christ die every day. And we argue whether we're Presbyterian or Methodist or not. What a disgrace. What a shame. What we need is a vision. Not look right down here at the end of your nose. Look out there at the end of the road. If I'm thinking about today, this, that, or the other, I'll live for the day. But I'm living for the eternity. Amen. For something out down here. Something that God has ordained. And I must go meet it someday. I've stuck too much of the time. Amen. By God's grace and God's help, there's been two years that I've asked him something over and over. I asked him 15 years for something, and he finally gave it to me. Amen. And I'll be knocking at his door if I'm going to next year if he doesn't give it to me this year. So he's for the thing that I've asked for. It's for his glory. Something that I could do for him now. You'll just permit this to me, then I can go out here and win souls for him a little bit better. Be a little stronger in a way. And I pray that he'll do it. That's my prayer to him. And my testimony to you that if you just pray for me and hold me up before him in prayer, then I can go on. How can I do one thing no matter what would take place if I didn't have somebody to believe me? It's just as much of it as I am or anybody else is. You're as much of it. No matter what we do, if we preach, what we say, if there's no one to believe it, then there's nothing can be done. That's right. It's all a failure. There's nothing to be done except we come together and we believe one another. I believe in you and you believe in me. And together we believe in God. And we believe in his spirit believing. Now, Brother Funker, you're coming up. You're holding the baby, huh? That's your excuse. Brother Woods, I guess you're next then. All right? And he's adopted Brother Jackson. So I guess Brother Jackson will be next. The Lord bless our Brother Jackson. It comes in. The Lord bless you. Do, you. do you love the Lord? I want to see your hands. Do you love the Lord? Amen. All right. Sister Gertie, come here just a minute. I want you to sing one with me. Everybody else is singing. I'm going to try. I'm as hoarse as I can be because we got a bad cold. And uh, stuff in my head. But I want you to help me sing this good old song. And give me the key of something. I don't know what it is. But... I don't know what it is. It's getting some kind of no cause for one thing dripping in blood. For this gospel that I preach, it's dripping in blood. Don't you believe it? Yeah. All right, everybody together. The first one to die for this Holy Ghost was John the Baptist. But he died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus, they crucified him, he breathed at the Spirit, would save them from sin, it's dripping with blood, yes, it's dripping with blood, this holy ghost gospel is dripping Peter and Paul. 
Paul and John the Divine, they gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mingled their blood like the prophets of old, so the true word of Cause the world to fear and quake. 
They would cause earthquakes in diverse places and all manners of things and perplex the time and distress between the nations. And he said in that day that Israel would blossom. Hallelujah. That old six point star of David's waving over Jerusalem tonight for the first time for 2,500 years. Nations are breaking. The fig tree putting forth its buds. All the other trees are putting forth its buds. The wicked ones are putting forth their buds. Romanism is putting forth its bud. Amen. Communism is putting forth its bud. And your church is putting forth its bud. Rain yeah. time's coming. Oh, great master of life. Rise with healing in your wings, Lord. Give your servants all the powers and signs to stretch forth the hand of the holy child Jesus to perform miracles and do signs and to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. Grant it, Lord. Bless this little church. Bless this pastor, Lord, our loving brother. Bless all that's associated here with us. All that calls upon your name everywhere around the world. Help this coming year, Lord. Help us to be the best for your service. Keep sickness out of our midst and anoint us with the Holy Ghost. Keep envy, keep strife, keep jealousy, keep everything that's ungodly away from us. And let it be said of us that we are your children, a city that's sitting on a hill that cannot be hid. Grant us, Father, bless us and forgive us of our past. And may we say as Paul, forgetting those things which are in the past, we press to the mark of the high calling in Christ. Lord God, send me wherever you will. I'm ready to go. Do your bidding at any time. Forgive us, I say again, and sanctify this church to thy name's honor and glory and the people therein. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated now. The Lord bless you. Oh, well, there's going to be a beating in the air in the sweet, sweet time.
Don't you just feel that way? Amen. Just like it's all scoured out. Just like Wonderful. Praise the Lord. All right. Turn in.